name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Welcome to my channel. Uh, still doing a 100 subscriber giveaway. Wanted to touch on that and 150. So please leave your Bitcoin or Ethereum address below. And I'm going to pick a winner at 100 uh, subscribers randomly uh, for a cold storage coin and $20. And at 150, it will be another cold storage coin that I will be choosing a winner myself. So moving into the uh, coin market cap here, 291 billion right now. Bitcoin took a nice little spike up last night and uh, we're at like 6,700. So if we get up to like 7,000, I think we're gonna be on a nice um, uh, 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 upward trend with greed as well. You know, everybody getting in, nobody's being so much fearful anymore and taking their money out of tether and true, putting it back into work. So uh, Ethereum 538, which is good to see. Uh, our top changers here, the double digits guys are the tokens. I mean, Huobi token and B-Box. Tron's third in place. It's good to see, but it, it needed to do a correction sooner or later. Um, tokens are a big thing right now. You know, obviously, it's, it looks like everybody's gearing up for some buying and selling. So it's a good thing to see. It's a good indicator that uh, something's going to be happening on the market here sooner than later. So moving into Bitcoin here, if it'll show us anything. Uh, I don't know why Coinigy just seems to always uh, needs to reload. Every time I get off the page for even a minute. It has to reload the whole page. And I don't know if that's my computer or if that's Coinigy, but I've done it on many computers and it still does the same thing. It just keeps reloading my pages for me. And it, it's really, um, you know, I like Coinigy, but it really does take some time up away from my day when I have to deal with this stuff. So Bitcoin, as you can see, it's taking a nice, this is a day chart, it's taking a nice pump up on the 19th or 18th and uh, you know, it's starting higher right now anyways for the day. So it's good to see um, that Bitcoin is um, going up, you know, and as you can see, the 200 days way far away. I mean, it had to make a correction sooner or later. Can't get that far away from that 200 day moving average without it either bending down or, or, or the price going back up. So uh, good to see you on there. So I did want to touch on uh, what's going on with the crypto markets. And these are the experts, you know, traders and big money that work for big industries and so on. And they're saying that, um, and I agree with them, that these are the issues that we're having in the crypto world. So obviously security and regulation, you know, that's a big thing. Um, exchanges are not utilizing the top-notch technology to, to protect consumers and hackers are, are taking full advantage of this issue. So the question is, is there any limit to these hacks? After every few months, we are always seeing the same pattern emerging. So, you know, um, we need to be forced, is what he's saying, to adopt high-grade security and regular security upgrades. It makes sense, but man, that really hurts them, you know, putting things in the mainstream. If security is a huge thing, isn't that what everybody's really worried about? Is their money being secure? So that's really the, you know, really huge problem, I think. And then, of course, crackdown on manipulation. Um, this, this guy says that, you know, uh, Tether, research indicates Tether and Bitfinex were at the center of price manipulation which led to December's high of nearly $20,000. So, you know, there's price manipulation out there and Tether's part of it in Bitfinex. And I don't even trade on Bitfinex anymore. They have problems. And then I have, I see just all this bad, you know, news about them all the time. Never see anything good about it. So it's hard to sit on the fence with Bitfinex and Tether. I just don't, I don't believe in Tether. Just, you know, simple as that. I don't, I don't, a flat, flat line coin is not something you should get into. It can definitely manipulate the market when you're just a flatline coin. Uh, three reasons why plus futures affect. So, of course, he's saying that um, uh, the futures contracts has a part to play the most recent decline in Bitcoin pricing. And that's what CFTC thought, too. So that's why, um, you know, uh, CME asked for data and nobody gave it. So CFTC came in and started swinging their dick a little bigger and said, hey, you need to you need to show us because we're going to drop a hammer on you. So that's that's another one. And then this guy, Miguel Palencia, uh, Wales, you know, he's saying that whales have a big um, uh, uh, play in moving the price around. So, of course, they do. But that's nothing. There's nothing legal, illegal about that or anything. I mean, whales have a lot of money and it's hard to put money in um, all at once and not make a footprint, you know, like a big bar up or a big bar down. So it's called the elephant walk is what they call that. When, you know, when you put a leg of an elephant in water, the water rises. Right. It's the same thing with uh, industry money. When the industry money comes in and puts money into Bitcoin, a lot of it, you know, the water rises, the, you know, the, the candle rises, or if they take a lot of money out, the candle dumps. We, we don't have enough money to do that as small traders and so on and so forth. No matter if we put us all together, 
those, you know, big money is, is going to do big, big footprints. And it's very, very obvious to know. So there's nothing illegal about that. Um, a rapid slowdown, you know, based on the rapid slowdown, all coins particularly become, became very overvalued and were overdue a correction. We're now searching for equilibrium again, where demand meets supply. From a macro point of view, it has never been better. So I feel comparisons to 2014-15 are misplaced. And I agree with that as well. I just thought that we're right on track at 300 billion. We went a little bit down for the past you know, week or so, but I, I think we're just right on track. So I mean, we're just searching for equilibrium to meet demands where demand meets supply. So, uh, you know, again, and they're just kind of saying, don't panic, you know, we're, we're showing you, you know, these are the issues, but they're getting done this year. So at the end of this year and beginning of next year, it should be really, really good. Keep in mind, the IRS is gonna be really cracking down on people next year for taxes. So make sure you guys do your taxes on a personal level and a business level correctly. They are going to be combing people to get money out of them. I mean, they know that people aren't doing things right. They didn't do right things right last year. And they're really going to, you know, come after the big boys this year. I don't know about the small businesses and small investors, but big investors are really going to be going after here. So uh, dark side of crypto, I wanted to touch on some things that people are saying that are kind of negative in the market of crypto. Um, computer, computer, computer malfunction, computer slowing down. I'll tell you. So basically what this article talks about is, you know, what are things that people can consider negative about cryptocurrency and what it's being used for and you know they say it's being used for sex obviously um and even at a club in las vegas they're taking bitcoin as tips now um for you know and you know we have Pornhub and so on and so forth this pink date tinder of escorting claims it sold 40 million tokens so i mean it's legal you know what i mean Pornhub's legal and as much as everybody says you know oh no it's it's they're you know, they partnered up with the really bad, um, I can't remember what coin partnered up with Pornhub, but Verge. And um, now it's a bad thing because they partnered up with Pornhub. So um, it, it's, I guess it's, take it, at, you know, how you want it, but you know, they make money. So it's as simple as that, it's a huge industry. So drugs, uh, it's a big thing. Um, you know, the dark web, traffickers of harder drugs besides cannabis, because now we have cannabis coins, are attracted to Bitcoin's perceived anonymity, okay? Catch on that, perceived anonymity. They think that they're not gonna get caught. FBI, I mean, loves these blockchains. They, they are able to catch people that they never would have been able to do and start investigations where they never would have, would have been able to do. And then obviously we have scammers out there that are still going after the you know global investors. And then you have fakes um, where this fake ID manufacturing ring um, operating on Reddit you know, wanted uh, transactions in Bitcoin and uh, the Fed sees $5.1 million worth based on that fake ID ring, you know? So, and then violence, you know, you have a lot of more kidnappings and robbing and, and you know, breaking and entering to get into people's computers and so on and so forth. So, you know, there's a lot um, of security issues, I guess, more than not um, when it comes to major factors in our, uh, you know, if you're looking at it in a macro sense or an overview sense, you know, that's kind of what we're looking at. So Japan, major economy set to induce unified cryptocurrency regulations. So based on these coins, Zcash, Dash, and Monero, because they're anonymous cryptocurrencies, privacy coins, um, they need to figure something out. And then, you know, it should be seriously discussed as to whether any registered cryptocurrency exchange should be allowed to use such currencies. It's a typical money laundering scheme. In a way, I'm not surprised. If you're going to do something illegal, then everyone knows to use the three anonymous siblings, which is, you know, uh, Zcash, Dash, and Monero. So those are the three big ones. And then of course, we have many other privacy coins and anonymous coins coming out. So they want unified regulations on the top G20 countries, uh, which are the big money, uh, the biggest money countries in the world. G7, everybody knows about the G7 countries, but they want all G20 countries coming in um, uh, to do these unified regulations. Um, so, you know, everyone's on the same page. So these, these, um, Money launderers can't just go from one exchange to the next and then do it because this exchange doesn't, but this exchange does. It becomes, you know, universal regulations. That's great. You know, that, that takes away a lot of scare, fear from people that are trying to come into uh, the crypto market. So testnet and mainland launches at the end of June or in June here. Um, it's kind of the reason why I picked up my uh, my swing trades, a couple of them anyways. Uh, Ontology's coming out with one. That's a long term swing for me or trade for me. Uh, high power blockchain is one of my swings. They're coming out with the mainnet at the end of June. I mean, if you guys 
I haven't looked in a, a high power blockchain, take a look at it because they're considered the Chinese EOS. So if you're looking for something um, other than EOS, this is going to be one, you know, that you're going to want to look at. And, and I mean, the team is phenomenal uh, as opposed to the EOS team is not. I mean, Brock Pierce is just a bad guy. Look him up, you know, sex offender, pedophile case. Uh, you know, ran away to Spain, then got caught in Spain, uh, you know, came back and paid it all off, and now he's fine. It, he's just a bad guy. Um, so, anyways, high performance blockchain. I mean, look at that. It was at 350 at one point in time, and now it's at 250. So, and I bought it at like 245. So, uh, great, great thing to see. And the key, uh, they're opening up a test net here at the end of June, too, as well. So, um, you know, they, uh, they were at, um, they're having uh, conversations with Alibaba. And I'm um, going to, you know, be partnering up with them. So uh, that's that's a great one to see, too, as well. And I bought it for a very, very cheap, you know, around 1.5, 1.8 uh, cents. So uh, good thing to see. So, uh, you know, again, how high powered blockchain is the Chinese EOS. I wanted to touch on EOS and how I just really don't like this coin. Um, it It's a duck. It, it looks like a duck. It walks like a duck. It quacks like a duck. It's a duck. And man, their sort their smoke screens are are really really um, uh, you know they're they're really just brilliant, but they're still smoke screens. So you do you know in this article you have a lot of people saying great you know the mainnet launch and so on and so forth with EOS, and then you have people like Matthew Green coming out saying for example EOS EOS is struggling now because they chose to do token coin voting, and all those tokens are held in exchanges or holders are apathetic. As some of the Bitcoin core devs pointed out, this solution has come up and been dismissed many times. Why didn't EOS know this? EOS knows. Now, they obviously know it, but they can't do anything about it. If they're planning to fail, why do anything about it? And I'm going to give everybody 20 billion co coins and projects under the EOS blockchain that don't have any and don't have anything. They don't have a, a, a working product. They don't have a working uh, prototype, anything in these projects as I've looked at them. But they're giving out all these 20 billion coins for a smoke screen. I mean, kind of what I was saying, you know, why are they holding all this Ethereum now that they've moved off the Ethereum blockchain? If they are the, you know, Ethereum killer, if they're in competition with them, well, why are you holding all this Ethereum? I'm telling you, it's a duck. I'm telling you. Um, so, again, they just kind of go, this guy, Eamon Gunsir, you know, he was one of the investors that we were talking about earlier that were saying – you know, what are the issues with um, cryptocurrency, you know, regulations, the whales and so on and so forth. This is one of the guys in there. And he's saying EOS isn't even trying and they're not. It simply starts out as a centralized system. OK, because it's 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 controlled uh, with 100 nodes and everyone's like, well, it's a voting system. It's not like Cardano. It's not. So um, you have to stake it in these 100 in these 100 nodes. You can't just stake it yourself like Cardano is. You, you're, you're forcing you to do things that you don't want to do. And so it can simply remain under centralized control because it can always pick future quorums under its own control. It's as simple as that. If you don't trust that initial server, which I don't, you shouldn't trust the system, which I don't. EOS isn't for you. And he bases it, you know, at a three to five. And, you know, that's even for me, even giving it um, some some, you know, leeway there. So, you know, again, in this article, they do do over some positive and negative things. But the negative things really outweigh the positive in my own. Uh, in, in my in my mind, uh, I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that, but this is my own opinion. Make your own decisions and research. But I'm showing you what I've researched and some things that are really uh, notable in this research. So Novagrads, big macro trader, okay, a macro traded Bitcoin back in like 2012, 2013, and now he's come back and he was on this uh, talking about you know how he trades and and what he's looking for and what blockchain and crypto is all about. And they even touched on EOS. And a couple things, you know, I even watched Crypto Crow, and I think Crypto Crow may have missed this in this, that in this, our video, and I don't want to show it because it's so long, that he talks about his company, they only go long on companies in a macro sense if they can see that they can build a community. And then they go short if they don't see if this coin can build a community. So then later in the, in the um, uh, interview, this guy asked Novogratz, are you going short or long with EOS? And he said short. So that just tells you in the equivalent that he does not believe that EOS can build a community after it goes pumps up, then it goes down. I mean, it, I mean, this guy's he's a, he's an investor and a trader, and then from a technical point of view, they're having problems with their video streaming. They're saying they want to do video um, 
you know, calls and so on and so forth. I mean, you know, I, this doesn't seem like you don't know what blockchain is because I've talked, you know, uh, read technical things and listened to technical people that have been in, you know, the business since the 1970s, you know, writing programs. And there's just, and they've been in video streaming. They don't, they, they see the problems coming and they, they just know that they can't scale off of that. So, you know, watch that video if you want on uh, Novogratz on Bloomberg. Um, but he, I mean, he really does show you, tell you in some small, small ways that, you know, with EOS, he's going short. He doesn't believe in the coin. It's as simple as that. But he knows it's going to go up as number five on the chart. It's going to go up and hit, you know, these big marks in December and January. And then they're just not going to be able to scale from there. Um, so moving forward from EOS, I don't like EOS, as we all know. So NEO is looking like a big, a strong buy right now. Uh, you know, it's gone down under 40 bucks. It was at $37 at one point in time. And now uh, they're going back up. So uh, it's a good time to buy in. I think I am going to buy in um, down here so I can get a better uh, average purchase price because I bought it at like $53. So if I bring it down and I buy it and it's going to be at like $45, $47 for an average pur purchase price. So I don't have a lot of NEO. I don't need a lot of NEO for a swing trade. Um, but I think that's what I'm going to do for that swing trade. So last but not least, uh, Crypto Fear and Greed Index. 32 today. Yesterday was 27. Good to see. It's kind of going up, you know, obviously based on Bitcoin and uh, other things in social media. So um, it's, it's good to see. And uh, hopefully we stay on this trend going up and then uh, we can go from there. So uh, my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below. It all helps my channel and me getting into dog rescue. And you guys have a great day. Keep up the grind.